Well, morning everybody. 7th of September 2020 and uh, as usual, no script. I uh, just want to get straight into this. Uh, there's been a lot of controversy going on. I mean, a tremendous amount. Uh, well, our former this, you know, Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott has got himself into trouble for saying that the elderly should be allowed to die, in other words, with dignity, let's say, and in painless can, a way, uh, if this COVID-19 just gets almost out of control, in a sense. But what he, I believe he means, and what I think I'd like to see happen, eventually, is what they call herd immunity. It's like the fact that we're we're, I say, immune. When we've got with colds and flu, we don't have lockdowns and uh, and, and all, all the economic tremendous trouble we're having right now with COVID-19. When you get a cold or a flu, and as has been said many times, there's 1,500 people a year dying from the flu. That's on a good year. On a bad year, they get 3,000. Now, I know. And the argument, I've heard the argument already, that if COVID-19 got out completely out, out in the community, out, and, and most people get it, in other words, they've got, first of all, a 98% chance of survival. But secondly, and a lot of politicians on both sides, I don't care here in Australia whether you're talking about the coalition, whether you're talking about the Labor Party, or indeed around the world, all they are doing is trying to slow the spread. Now that's going to cost, it has, it's already costing billions of dollars. But there may come a time, and I can't pinpoint when that will be, but it might be in the next 12 months or more, whatever, when they just realise that the herd immunity road is probably the best way to go, and you will have thousands of deaths. You won't have a few hundred like we've got now, 800 or something in Australia. And as for vaccines, uh, I've seen uh, even a worst case scenario video saying that there may not be a vaccine developed. And it talks about polio and it's telling the, the truth about that. It was fixed and measles, when I was a kid, measles and mumps, they had to have vaccinations for all that and that defeated them. I'm not, I'm not an anti-vaxxer, but I certainly am not rushing out to get this COVID-19 vaccine when it comes. But I do issue one slight warning in that I believe the government will, will f tell people if you want to travel overseas, you have to get vaccinated. And anyone from overseas coming to Australia has to be vaccinated. Now, all that sounds, in theory, fantastic. Oh, great. OK, it'll be all over and done. 12 to 18 months time, everything will be moving again. Well, I've got some bad news for you. A vaccination might, at the best, have a 50% effectiveness rate. That is to say, a thousand people get vaccinated, or 2,000 people get vaccinated, it doesn't matter how many, half of them are protected and the other half are susceptible to getting COVID-19. It is that simple. They will therefore slow down the spread considerably with a vaccine. And all the commerce that we've got right now, the state of Victoria, for example, is basically in, in, in peril. It's, it's, they've got to lock down to extreme measures and they're going to try and come out of that over a period of time. But what they've got to realise is this is going to get away from them in that sense and it's going to do the damage that it's going to do. Now, I'm not trying to be some kind of prophet of doom on this, but I, uh, and people criticise me if I say, for example, on another, on another subject, and that is the economy, uh, that um, Alan Kohler of the ABC uh, is a... Um, an expert, truly, and, and, he's been, and he's honest. He says, we're, we're, we're not in uh, a recession in Australia, we're in a depression. So it's going to take five or ten years or more to come out of this problem. Now, certainly COVID-19 caused a fair percentage of it, but 
it's going to take a long time to recover. And, there are, and he said that by October, end of October, there'll be 100,000 businesses in Australia will close down, as he says, forever. What he means is 10, 20 years. I mean, they might be gone literally forever. So um, it would be refreshing to have politicians on either side of politics or anywhere and on the subject be honest about it and actually approach the whole thing, let's say, both the economic situation and the COVID-19 situation from a different angle. Uh, and that is prepare the country for what could happen and what will happen rather than trying to drag it out for now, months, many months, and try and drag it out for a year or two, all goodness knows. And when are we going to be able to travel around the countryside unhindered? Uh, the state borders are closed and people are totally inconvenienced trying to get from one state to the other when their normal life would be that they would live in one state and work in the other or they'd go to school in the other or they'd have a property with some sheep or cattle or whatever on it that they go and manage in the other state and they can't do it. So these things have got to get resolved and at some point you will see that it is it is going to be resolved but it has to be in a sense an admission that they have to go to the herd immunity so that the vast majority of people get this COVID-19 and they and the 98 percent of those recover from it and straight away I got family or friends to say what about you do you want that and so of course I don't want it and we pray every day not to get it we pray that our family and friends don't get it but I'm just trying to be realistic here, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm being totally honest about it. Now all we need is politicians to be honest about it as well and say, okay, all right, we tried the, tried the lockdowns, we tried all the restrictions, we tried the masks. By the way, a mask, uh, I, I shouldn't be laughing, they are of some use, especially a, du a double, double or triple uh, layer will, will protect you from getting any germs. But if someone coughs, you're in a supermarket, someone sneezes or coughs in the aisle, and it, it ca they, those tiny droplets carry a lot further than 1.5 metres, so forget that. They'll go double or triple that. And if they go in your eye, my friends, you got the COVID-19. That's why you get these uh, hospitals and people wearing full face masks, like a big shield. So... It won't go in their eyes. It won't go in their nose and mouth for sure because they're wearing a mask as well. So I want to be positive about it. I want things to get resolved the same as the next person. But right now I'm just being completely honest about it and saying that over time it's, it's going to have to get resolved in the way I've just been describing. And people have been attacking our former Prime Minister for saying what he has said. Uh, I've got to stand up for him in a sense on that one. He is right about it. It's a sad and a very depressing situation. But we, uh, we're going to have to face it and the country and the parliaments and all the rest of it and people in charge all around the country and around, around the world are going to have to face up to it sometime. So that's my little two cents worth. So thanks for viewing.